Not a, not a single one where you're like, man, this skinny. I crushed it. No. No? no. no. Did you try it? Yeah, I tried it. I was say, I thought it was pretty easy. I like the first one is just one pair. Huh? Yeah, Miss King. Hold on. Somebody was mad yesterday. Oh, this time you did it. It's weird. You wipe your hands. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Didn't you find it weird that I had to do 28 and we had never done 26 or 27? No. Did it in 28? No, Peyton did the wrong homework. Look, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. Okay. Did the you have the review homework? Oh, no. It's on the homework sheet. What did you do with the homework sheet? No. The homework sheet? You wear homework sheet. Girl. Oh, my God. Yes! Okay, please do that. We're going to take some notes on it. Dev, if you find it, let me know. Okay, so you started that a little bit. Got that. Got that. Cool. Pharrell, mm -hmm. your homework's not even out, dude. Right there, here you go. Okay. Okay. Where's the So Chris is not here. Devin, did you ever find your homework? Did you find your homework? I forgot to do the simplest one here, bro. He he was not here. He was not here for the past two days. Just kidding. He never he never put a grade in for me, man. I I did number twenty six and seven. Oh, that um, sounds silly. It's simple. I don't I don't know. Okay. I put a neighbor to the door. Sir. If I'm if I'm gonna do two of them, so what did I get? Like you, you didn't do most of the review homework. What are you talking about? I did five on the board. Hold up, let me see what I did. What was it? Five? I did five. Well, I did six on I did six. I did nine. I well, didn't do twenty. I would seven. take some notes to see if you need to update anything. You didn't do 26, 27, and you didn't do E or F on the review homework questions. Can you go over number nine? I would love to go over number nine. Are there any others of this that we need to talk about? I got number nine wrong. Huh? You got, a, you got number nine wrong? Number nine was definitely one that I knew would be a bit of a challenge. Um, so, anybody have any other questions before we talk about number nine? Number nine. Yeah, when did you write that? Wait, what up there? I didn't. Does that look like my handwriting? Do you think I would ever do your as you are? <laughs> my handwriting's over there. Okay, my bad. All right. So, Kelsey, sir, is this in standard form so that you can identify A, B, and C right now? Hold on, let me look. Standard form. You saw it. No, it's not. Actually, yes. No, it's in. Um, of a quadratic, of oh, a factor form. It's the factor form of a quadratic equation. That's definitely not standard. There's no way to know ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, I want to be careful though, Peyton, you said solve it. What do you mean by solve it? Because I believe solving means to find the solution, the thing that makes the equation true. Do we need to solve? Yeah. Distribute out. We need to distribute it? No. Okay, so you need to be careful with our language. Well, let's see what happens when we distribute. Notice we are multiplying. A 9x. So what would that 3x be multiplied by? 3x plus 2. Yeah, we need to multiply by the whole thing. That's why I show this as a separate step. And so what does this negative 2 or minus 2 need to be multiplied by? 3x plus 2. The whole thing, 3x plus 2. Okay? So what's 3x times 3x? 9x nine, nine squared. 9x nine squared? Yeah. yeah. And 3x times 2? 6x. Plus or minus? We agree? No. No? No. 
Why is it plus? Yeah, it's positive times a positive, so it'd be plus 6x. Now, negative 2 times 3x? Negative 6x. So minus? I mean 6x. 6x? Minus 2 times a positive 2? Minus 4. Any of those terms simplify or combine? Yes. Which ones? 6x minus 6x? What is that? Or you could even say plus 0x minus 4. A, B, and C. Any questions about that? Does that answer your question, Kelsey? Yes. Yes? What do you not understand? It's not, it's not about this. It's about how to write a situation like this. We'll get there. We're not there yet. No, I'll say nothing. All right, so 26 and 27 are already up here. Check your answers. Check to see what questions you need to ask based on those answers. Ms. Cooper is doing an errand for me and really quickly, and so I'm checking on her classroom briefly. Oh, okay. All right. Any questions? 27. So, A, B, C, or D, or all? All? So, remember the vertex is going to be where we find symmetry, right? So, you see the 4, the 13, and the 28. So, you see how this is in the middle? Two one is my vertex then. Whoa, 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 go back once. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm not going to fix it. Hold on. How did you find the symmetry on that? Four is the same. Thirteen is the same. So twenty-eight and twenty-eight would be the same. And then forty-nine and forty-nine would be the same. So that's right in the middle. Does that make sense? I need to draw it out. Okay, so it's going by ones. So that'd be two, one, three, four, one, four, zero, thirteen, and four, thirteen. Wherever they start to repeat in the middle, that's the vertex. Two comma one. Right? Remember, x is always equal to the x value of the vertex. x is equal to 2. Does that make sense? You look confused. Okay, so one thing I want to remind you is, we want to think about it from the table, but you can definitely make a graph to make sense out of these things, even using Desmos to graph the points if you want. All those good so far, Desiree? I would assume that we need to talk about the x-intercepts. Yes, yes. Yes, yes? Okay. So let me ask you this question. What do you know about every x-intercept? Uh, one of those is zero. One of the values is zero. So if it's an x-intercept, would the x or the y be zero? Y. The y. We want to know what x is. So the y is zero. We good? But there is no zero in the y column, or in either one of them. In either one of them. Now, and notice here with 27, does it ever intersect the x-axis? Thank you so much. Does it ever intersect the x-axis? Intersect x-axis. Or intersect the x-axis? Oh, no. No, it never does. Now, we're going to talk about that in a second, because you're right, there are no zeros in that table. However, what kind of number, number has to be in between a positive 3 and a negative 2? A zero. So even though we can't see it, what do we know the y value has to be at some point right here? Zero. So then we don't know what it is, but there is one x-intercept here. Okay. Because there has to be one between a positive and a negative. Now if we keep the trend going, it's negative 5, negative 2, so what's next? Negative 3. Positive 3. That's a positive 3, bro. Yeah. Okay. 
So notice there'd be another x-intercept here. Oh, yes. So how many x-intercepts do we have? Two. Two. Right? If you graph it, it crosses the x-axis twice. Notice over here, though, do we ever go from a positive to a negative? So are there any x-intercepts? Okay, and you see it graphically as well. We go with those I ideas. I understand now. Remember, that usually the whole point of the first night of homework is to help you start to develop an understanding so that the second and third night you get really good at it. That's why you got to do it the first night. Yes, Krill? Can you try number 28 for understanding? 28 will not be for accuracy. 29. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm about to try so we know what to do. I'm still kind of looking. 28 will be homework over the weekend. Okay. Can you make a problem over there? Yeah. I will do it during enrichment. Now, well, one, if you want to, you can work on it with Kelsey. Two, remember I'm recording, so you can go on YouTube and literally wa uh, watch our discussion of this again yeah. to understand it, right? I'm trying to give you the resources you need. Use them. Yeah. Okay? And my commitment is I'm behind, but I will have every slide and every video up for both my classes before I go to bed tonight. Okay, take advantage of it if you need it. All right, so here's the review homework. What questions do we have off of this review homework? Uh, review homework. Hold on, let me get there first. It's number nine on the homework page. Okay. I just lost my pistol. What? Say it ain't so. Oh, Man, too bad Shelly's not here. She won't get to see. For test today. Yeah, well, the test last week, yeah. He just disappeared in thin air. Yeah, Shelby did. What did My pencil. What was the highest you can get on the test? I mean, you can always actually score a little bit above 100. Oh, well, I'm just I don't know where it went. Yeah, you can always score a little bit above 100. Um, most people don't usually, but. I can't. Julia. So while I'm passing these out, you should be checking to see what questions you need to ask. About the, about the test or about the homework? The, the homework. Oh. Wow. And even when making 100, that doesn't mean you made 100 on everything. Yeah, not to expose her, but like legitimately, Shelby made a two on one question and still made a hundred. What? I and still has fives and five point fives. So I you can make a hundred without making a five, a six on everything. Remember, I average it, and the average of a five point five is a hundred. So it is very possible to wow. earn that. Hey, what is Q focus on your homework. Q L E. Huh? Q L E. Quadratic, linear, exponential. Oh, okay. Now I got a one, point five. Whatever. And a negative one. And a zero. You still did okay, didn't you? I don't know. I don't know what the overall grade yeah, is. I'll tell you after class then. Okay. What questions do you have off of this homework so okay. we can get better at writing explicit and recursive equations and identifying linear, exponential, and quadratic? Because again, that will be a part of that reassessing process for any of us who yeah. did not necessarily pass a quarter earlier this year. Yeah. How to write the uh, equations? Well, I know. I know for which ones? For all of them, like the page head, like I, I know how to like find out if, which one it is by just not writing. How did you do it for? Well, let me say again. For each, how did you write the explicit and recursive? Okay, let's let's focus on e um, and see if that answers some of your questions. So, I mean, honestly, if you're struggling with explicit, what I would do is do the recursive first. How does every recursive equation start? Because if you can do that, then you can write a recursive equation. Well, How does a recursive equation start, Quirrell? F of x. Or n. Or n. Equals x minus 1. Yeah. Just x minus 1? It's f, I guess. F of x minus 1. F, yeah. F, yeah. Remember, the whole point is, is if I'm looking at the, the x value of 1, x minus 1 is 0, so I'm it's based on the zeroth term, right? The current is equal to the previous. But the f of x, that's the output, right? So the current output is somehow equal to the previous output. Okay? 
And then what do we always apply? Not in this specific case, but what has to come after the f of x minus 1? Rate of change. The rate of change. Some rate of change. And then you also need a starting point. Okay? What is the rate of change up here? It's not 5. Thank you. So look at the very first thing I did. That's all a recursive equation is. You have to identify what is being done. This should come in. You put, you put times five, two. f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 5. Wait. That's the rate of change. Now, I did have a starting point, but I just chose this point. Anyone know why I chose that point? I was messing with You can pick any point. Now, there is a reason I picked that one, though. It's easy. It's not just easy. It's not just because it starts at 0. What kind of point has an x value of 0? Oh, the y intercept, right? Okay. But you could pick any point up there. Notice I did do two different explicit equations, and you can do plenty of others. There's just the two I picked. What's your question, Peyton? Well, it's not really a question. It's just the way you worded something. When you said make your recursive first, and then that I'll do your explicit, a lot of the people that I've talked to, myself included, we could make the recursive. The only problem was setting up the explicit and understanding what exactly it, how to write it. Cool. The, the recursive still yourself. helps you get the explicit. I mean, we'll talk I about it in a second. I understand what all I need for an explicit. I just don't know how to set it up. You're right. I'm not going to show you that at all right now. I know you're going to show it, but I was just saying because you were saying to make the recursive first. Yeah, and you know why I said to make the recursive first? Because you need to know that stuff to make the recursive. Because the recursive can help you make the explicit. Okay? Kelsey, you have a question right now before we continue? Um, if uh, cursive the last part after the plus two, what was that? Wait, this is an explicit here. You're talking about that? No, no, no. I'm talking about if the other other problem next to it. Uh, recursive. Here? Yes. What that if that part. Why did you put that? I don't understand what that is. Well, what type of function is this? Quadratic. So what is this? Linear. Not just linear. Uh, 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 uh. Remember how the rate of change has to come after the f of x minus 1? Oh, yeah. And what kind of rate of change does a quadratic equation have? Linear additive. So notice how that's the point slope form of a line. I did a linear additive rate of change. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second, huh? I thought the rate of change were two today. Is the first set of differences or the second set of differences the rate of change? Wait, what did you say? The first set of differences is the rate of change. Correll, notice the 2 does come up. But the 2 is the slope of the linear additive rate of change. It's not just plus 2. If you're saying that the rate of change is plus 2, that means I'm adding 2 every single time. Oh. Is that what's happening here? No. I'm adding 2 to the rate of change. Okay. Um, now, Peyton, to get back to your question about why in the world I say write the recursive equation first to help with the explicit, look at that recursive equation, right? Here it is. When I do an explicit and I focus on f of x, that's my output. Look at this recursive equation. What output did I start at? Uh, 1. Cool. f of x is equal to 1. Now, what am I doing to that one? Minus one plus or times five. I'm multiplying by five. Okay. Hey, how do I show that I'm repeatedly multiplying by five? Exponent. What kind of exponent? X. It's done. Because notice I use the y-intercept. And on top of that, once you write your equation, check to see if your equation works. If I substitute a 1 in, what am I supposed to get out? Zero. Nope. Five. A 5. five sorry, sorry. So f of 1, does that equal 1 times 5 raised to the first? Something like that. What's 5 to the first? 5. 5 times 1? 5. There's my equation. Okay? That's it. Now, notice I did do a second equation because... 
Let's say you didn't notice the y-intercept. What's the actual first point in this table? So, Peyton, notice this. What's the output that I'm starting at now? Uh, negative 2. Or, uh, 125th. 125th. Notice that literally is f of x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So f of x equals 1 divided by 25. Oh. Hey, what am I repeatedly doing to that 125th? Times 5x. Not times 5x, times 5... Squared. Nope. To the x. Remember, repeatedly multiplying by 5, and it can change how many times I multiply by 5. So raised to the x, x in, the, yeah. in the exponent. We're almost done. What? I'll add the, the point. Part, partially. Remember, it's x minus... Oh, wow. Minus what? Huh? Why? Why minus 1? About the first one. It's not the first point. Minus negative 2. The first point would be here. Wait, minus 2. This would be the negative 2 term. So minus negative 2. Oh. I'm going to show you something in a second. Wait, no, no. Why would you just put regular 2? Mm -hmm. It would be x plus 2. I haven't simplified it yet. Okay? Now, I want to point this out. So all that still holds true here for the linear, but I want to remind you of this. There are two explicit linear equations that we have specifically studied. What are the two explicit linear equations? Uh, point slope and... Point slope, which is y equals... mx plus b. No. There is a y equals mx plus b, but is that point slope? No, that's no. uh, slope intercept. Slope intercept. What's slope point slope? mx minus x1 plus y1. Okay. Notice, when I have slope intercept, one way to even write that is, hey, I'm starting at what y value? And what am I repeatedly doing to that negative 7? Not times. Plus 5. How do I show repeated addition? By? Notice how that's the same exact idea that I did right here, except I started at 125th and I repeatedly multiplied, right? Okay? And so you can flip it the other way, but that's one way to understand it here. Or if you were to do point slope, you have to do x minus x1. Everyone pay attention to this. Isn't this just the y value of a point right here? Yeah? And then we're multiplying by our common ratio. And then we're raising it to the x minus, isn't that just the x value of the point? Doesn't that look a whole lot like point slope just for an exponential function? Yes. Hey, you good with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all that it is. If you didn't know that or you needed to write that down, we shouldn't be staring at it. We should pick up a pencil. So if you want to, you could call this the general uh, exponential explicit. Something like that. It doesn't have a formal name. And so I tried to get away from just telling you memorize this equation, but that, that's what's happening. So why uh, time? Wait, what's R in this? Rate Common change. ratio, your multiplicative rate of change. Uh, and then x and then x uh, starting point. Well, x oh, minus right, x1. Right. Notice it's just like m times x minus x1 plus y1. Mm, okay. Do we need to talk about this recursive? It sounded like you had a question about it, Kelsey. What? Do we need to talk about this recursive? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Okay, so since that's right. written in there, and Mark, I'm going to move forward and just briefly talk about a couple of things. So we're going to look at our quadratic functions test, um, focusing on a couple of details that um, were probably the most missed things. Um, because I want to make sure we understand them, so make sure you have your test out. Take some notes because, I mean, as I've said before, I don't care when you learn it, I care that you learn it. So we're going to take a nine weeks test. If you show me you learned it better by the test, I'll reward that. Okay, huh? You say with what? How about a higher grade? Um, can I erase this that's on the board right now? We all have it down if we wanted it. Okay, so... Really quickly, I think overall, especially in this class, we did pretty well. 
uh, with numbers one through four, the one thing I want to emphasize and I want to point out is, I was really disheartened. Um, a lot of students did stuff like B and C really well, where they did say, okay, I'm going to distribute my 2x to the x plus 5, and I'm going to distribute my mi minus 5 to the x plus 5, and that was awesome. However, they also distributed with stuff like A and D. Do I need to distribute with A? Why not? Yeah, why don't you need to distribute with A? Because we're just adding. So just add, right? You distribute with multiplication. If you want to, you can reorganize this to help you put your linear terms together and your constant terms together. Done, right? And there were other ways to do this. I did see some students very successfully just graph all of these in Desmos and pair them up correctly for the corresponding um, uh, equivalent expressions and I will say like there were no directions that you had to do it algebraically so I was okay with that as long as you justified it you had to explain what you did in Desmos to get there but what I was most disheartened by was number six on the whole test was what I was most disheartened by now I will make the note I did not catch it originally but it should have been f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus 2x. That should not have been an n. Or it should have been just n's or just x's. But, you know what the most common incorrect answer here was? I'm willing to bet most of us put it as well. No. I put it D. B is correct. B is correct? No, B is in dot. D is in dog. D is in dog. D is in dog. <laughs> but the question I asked is, what is the what was the most incorrect answer that people put? Probably A. How probably are we supposed to know that? A. I'm gonna guess probably A. A was the most common incorrect answer. That would make sense. That would make sense, right? Because what kind of expression is this right here? That's repeated additive. That's repeated additive, meaning it is linear, right? Well, the thing about it is. is Okay, what is a quadratic function? It's the product of two linears. But do we have the product of two linears here? No, but the answer would be quadratic, right? But why is it quadratic? Because... Uh, what type of equation is this? Because it has a linear additive repeated uh, adding by 2m number of times. Uh, Get closer. Listen to the question I'm asking. What type of equation is this? It's recursive. We need to recognize that this is recursive because what comes after the f of x minus 1? The rate of change. So that plus 2x is not a linear function. That is a linear rate of change. Desiree, what type of function has a linear additive rate of change? Quadratic. That's the justification we should have had here. We should have noticed and been able to articulate that is a recursive equation with a linear additive rate of change, so it is a quadratic function. Those are things we've got to notice. Does that make sense? Are you taking notes on this paper? I have a part on this. The only thing that was going to say was the justification. Okay. I have a six on everything above. Does that make sense? Are we comfortable? Thumbs up if we're feeling good about it. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, cool. So please remember to pay attention to the type of equation. Because if it was just y equals 2x, heck yeah, that's linear. But because it's recursive, that's not linear. That's a, well, it is linear, but it's a linear rate of change, not a linear function. Okay? What type of additive rate of change is it? Is it is this constant or is this linear? Oh, okay. linear. Yeah. It's a linear additive rate of change. Um, number eleven, we found a decent amount of success on, but the interpreting the context is what we missed the most here. So I do want to talk about this.
because we made it way more difficult than it had to be. The thing I will say is this, it is really hard to interpret the context if you don't know what the variables mean. So what are the variables in the context or in the equation? X, okay. zero. So we have X and what else? Look at the equation. Is that a variable? Oh, no. Oh, we have uh, f, f of x. f of x. Remember, x on its own is the input, f of x is the output. Look at the word problem. What is x? x is a potato. It's a potato. Is a potato a variable? Okay. Potato is a thing. <laughs> oh. Um, it's not a variable. X is variable. Yeah, but a variable is a variable? No, what, it, what variable, I mean, x is a variable, what is x based on this context? It's, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's the second. Thank you. Oh, second. Literally the x is right here. Oh, okay. Now, one thing to clarify is seconds are the unit. What do we measure in time. seconds? Time. So x is my time in seconds. So time is something that was changing in this problem. What was the other thing that was changing? And it was something about the potato, but the potato itself is a potato. What was changing about the potato as time? The height. The height. How far the potato will be from the ground. That is literally what height is. Yes. Height. And I will make this note. Time in seconds after the potato was shot. Notice I'm adding a lot of context because that's going to make everything that I explain later easier. So f of x is the height. The height of what? Of the, the potato shot. Of the potato. At x seconds, right? So what does f of 1 mean? 1 what? Second. One second. Notice, what is that one taking the place of? Second. Well, which variable? X. X. See how that one is my X value? Yes. So, one second, that's my time, and so it's unknown, but what are we looking for at one second? The height? So, what is F of one? F of one is the height. Notice I'm not telling you what it is, because I don't know is the height of the potato one second after the potato is shot. Literally all I did was take everything from when I defined my variables. You gotta define your variables. Okay? Yeah. F of 1 is the height of the potato one second after the potato is shot.